The classic is the most common Swiss Army knife, according to Sack Wiki. The basic model consists of scissors, drop point blade, toothpick tweezers, and nail file. The Victorinox model is 58 millimeters in length and has a combined nail file and screwdriver, giving the name Classic SD. Victorinox has also continued Wenger's version of the Classic, the 65 millimeter Wenger or Executive 81 model. The blade is 5 millimeters longer than the SD. The nail file has a pointed cleaning tip that could potentially serve as a small Phillips, and the larger micro serrated scissors are lever actuated. Let's consider ongoing maintenance as well as some simple improvements. The blade has some gummy residue from opening boxes. Using a plant-based oil, such as grapeseed, is a quick and food-safe way to clean the surfaces. Next, washing the blade in warm soapy water. Rinse in clean water, dry, and examine for any needed repair. Make a ferrocerium striker. The heel of the blade has an unsharpened area, sometimes called a ricasso. The ricasso shows slightly rounded edges on this SD. Squaring these edges will make this portion of the blade much like the squared back of a sack saw. The sharp squared corners on the saw are a good ferrocerium striker for igniting a fire. With a little grinding, the classics Ricasso can be shaped to serve as a makeshift ferrocerium striker. A caution, this rework may void the knife warranty. To make this grinding process as simple and inexpensive as possible, I'm gluing a length of 150 grit sandpaper to the back of a popsicle or ice pop stick. Notice this paper does not go to the edges of the stick so as not to damage the scales of the knife when grinding. The knife handle and blade are further taped to prevent damage. The knife is placed in a felt lined vise and the popsicle stick file is used to square the inside edge of the ricasso. I use the top edge of the vise to sight the stick and assure I am grinding evenly. This will take a few minutes. When the ricasso corners appear square and have a sharpest edge, try striking a ferrocerium rod. Now this will take some practice as the striking area is small on this blade. An additional grinding may be needed if your edges are not sharp enough. I measured the ricasso before grinding at 6.1 millimeters and after at better than 6.05 millimeters. So very little material is removed. That's it. You now have a mini striker on an otherwise unused part of your blade. Next, the knife is polished using automotive rubbing and then polishing compound. And certainly other metal polishes can be used too. I'm paying particular attention to the back of the nail file because as small as it is, it can still serve as a very small mirror for checking for facial injury or even something in your eye. A minute of polishing can make quite a difference. Using the same automotive rubbing and polishing compounds renews the scales too. The pen blade is very thin, being only slightly more than half the thickness of the typical 91 millimeter blade. I consider it more of a slicing rather than a cutting tool. Examining the blade edge shows no dings on this and it seems reasonably sharp. Refer to the sack maintenance link in the description if you must sharpen. Instead, I will strop the blade. Stropping both aligns and polishes the blade edge while removing very little metal from the already tiny blade. A stropping surface can be made by gluing leather to a flat length of wood. I'm using a stropping compound having a 5 to 7 micron grit. For this blade, I can use either a penny or even a nickel to set this blade angle to about 15 and 20 degrees respectively. I assure the edges in contact with the stropping surface. I apply very light even pressure and sweep the blade across the stropping surface. I make several passes and change to the other side of the blade. This process is repeated for around a minute or so. Stropping can also improve the classic SD scissors edge without worrying about damaging the tiny scissors. Perhaps you are aware that you can magnetize a pin or a needle to create a makeshift compass. The tweezers can also be magnetized. This rare earth or neodymium magnet is rubbed against the tweezers five to 10 times in the same direction. Compare the scissors compass with a calibrated compass to determine its accuracy and of course, which end is north. Make a stitcher. The classic doesn't have an all reamer, but we can get some of the same functionality. Notice this all reamer has a thread hole towards the top. This can be recreated by making a small hole in the toothpick. For strength, the hole is made in the thicker part of the needle. Place the toothpick on some corrugated cardboard, heat a metal needle or pin and push it through the toothpick into the cardboard. 
Once the hole is complete, deburr the plastic rim around the hole with a drill bit or progressively finer grits of sandpaper. This smooths the toothpick so it is still usable. Make your stitching holes with the tip of the tiny blade and use the toothpick with some upholstery thread to do some rough stitching. If you happen to be a person who uses the toothpick or tweezers, then you might want to disinfect the knife. Give the knife a quick wash and rinse. The CDC recommends four teaspoons of household bleach mixed with one quart of room temperature water. Let the knife soak for about two minutes. Finally, lubricate the knife pivots with a food safe NSF H1 rated oil. This Victorinox oil is viscous and the tools need to be manipulated for the oil to distribute. As it is often said, the best pocket knife is the one you have with you, even if it is one of the smallest. And even better, when it's working well and you made it so. Remember to adapt, make, and be resilient.